Hello and welcome to sunny Broadstairs and a classic Kentish seaside scene full of fish and chips, sticks of rock and today eight artists brush in one hand, ice cream in the other. And among today's array of talent we have a martial arts expert, a part-time reprographer. A what? I don't know either. And a former bouncy castle artist. And it's not easy painting when you're on a bouncy castle. Welcome to Sky Arts Landscape Artist of the Year. From Kent's sandy beaches to the locks and castles of the Scottish Highlands. We've travelled across Britain searching for stunning scenery for the artist to paint. There's a hell of a lot of detail. I'm starting to feel a bit panicky myself. There's so much. <laughs> there is a lot going on, yeah. There's so many buildings, there's so many windows, so many people. Just don't get drowned <laughs> or sure. carried away to sea. From hundreds of artworks submitted, only eight competitors have been picked for each heat. And today we have six professional artists. Stuart Beckett, Michelle Heron, Yellen Ran Huang, Jane McKay, Martin Taylor, and Jen Gash. Kind of still in shock, but now it's here, I'm just like, wow, what on earth am I doing here? And joining them are two amateur artists, Peter John Robert Thompson, and Lorna Wheel. It's an amazing challenge that's suited to the way I work and I think that's going to be so much fun. As usual, the artists will work under the watchful eyes of our judges. Independent curator Kathleen Soriano, award-winning artist Tai Shan Schierenberg, and art historian Kate Bryan. So we'll just get little black marks, no bikinis. <laughs> Good <No>. idea. <laughs> They're all competing for a £10,000 commission from the Imperial War Museum to mark the centenary of the First World War armistice by creating an artwork inspired by the landscape of a forgotten battlefield. As well as the chosen eight, we've invited 50 more artists to compete as wildcards. Just one of them will go through to the next stage of the competition. So, Ty, is this Landscape Artist of the Year or an episode of Baywatch? So, which of today's artists will win a place in the semi-final? How many canvases have you got on the go? Well, sort of four. Sort of four. Do you have trouble making up your mind? N no. Yes. <laughs> Before the challenge begins, the artists unpack their trusted tools for the day ahead. I've whittled it down over the years to 12 colours, and I just use those 12 colours for everything. French ultramarine, you can see it, can't you? The guy in his French beret and his onions, you know? Uh, I've pinched my teenage daughter's socks that I'm going to use to paint with. It's really helpful. All of the heat artists have been selected on the strength of a digital submission. And now the judges can examine the original artworks. Welcome to the seaside. <laughs> and we start with something quite mysterious. Yeah, it's lovely. It's like the echo of a painting. But despite the fact that it's bordering so close to being abstract, it feels like a real landscape. So I think it does a lot with very little. It's full of mood. It's mystical, magical, spiritual. The artist saw a beautiful view and started drawing and then realised, oh, there's more of this for you, I want to do. And sort of, <laughs> then sort of added another page and then another page. And what is nice is each page has got its own character. It looks like a <laughs> painting of a disappearing world. It does, and I think it's such a clever way of tackling landscape to give us a focus of a shop front that makes you think of, you know, the Impressionists when they were loved painting people through glass or sitting in cafes and bars. It is about barges and canals, but it's also about sort of a lost time. I love the actual mark making. The marks are scratched into metal mm. and they have this beautiful feathery sensitive quality. It's just marvelous. I love the vertical format. It's approached almost in the way that a Chinese artist would approach painting a landscape. Yeah. But at the same time, it feels very European, busy city, you know, with yeah. the red buses and all the people moving around. 
I think what we really liked about this was that it felt like you were just capturing a real snapshot and it's got this lovely naive quality to it. It's a very interesting bit of sort of social documentary done in a very jolly way. We know boats can be really tricky, really cheesy, but this artist has managed to do it very well. And this the splash red, of red. Yeah. I think it might be sort of a nod to, you know, Constable's little red dot in the, as, as, as a focal point. We just absolutely marvelled at this photorealistic style and the way that they were able to conjure just thousands of leaves. I mean, this is a study of leaves. You know, each one catches the light in their own way. I look forward to them rendering every single grain of, of sand. sand. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't sleep very well at all. I just couldn't stop thinking about the day and, yeah, maybe have a nap later in the shed. <laughs> it's always nerve-wracking at the beginning of a painting because you don't know how it's going to turn out. I'm so excited. I thought I'd be nervous, but actually I'm like, it's such a nice day, it's going to be amazing. Artists, please pick up your palettes and prepare to paint. Your challenge is about to begin. You have four hours to complete your painting and your time starts now. Some artists begin their study with a traditional sketch or by exploring their environment. While others focus on a tonal starting point, applying a background wash to their canvas or canvases. Cool. That's one orange knee. The view today is of Broadstairs, one of the most popular seaside destinations on the Kent coast. Golden sands and glittering water are framed by Victorian architecture, chalk cliffs and colourful beach huts. I think they'd be complete lunatics if they don't respond to the physicality of what is here. They can do beautiful abstract light glistening on the sea, they can do the nostalgic architecture. Do you know what I think the scene today lends itself to is these slightly jaded bits of the beach. That sort of slightly mystical, slightly darker quality that allows more for the viewer to sort of construct a story with their own eye. We better get some good paintings today because I think this is one of our best locations. I'm loving the boats and the composition's great because you've got the sea coming in and then you've got the beach huts coming around and there's bits of colour everywhere and it's very like seaside. So I think that's going to be nice to get in. I tend to go to the seaside quite a lot because I live on the coast. So boats are great. I get quite excited by drawing boats. <laughs> it's a bit sad. Keen to pursue a career as a freelance illustrator, 23-year-old amateur artist Lorna Wheel recently graduated with a first-class degree in illustration. Her hand-drawn submission is a three-page panorama of the Cornish coast that she sketched in coloured pencil while out walking one afternoon. Lorna, I'm a bit confused. You've only got one sheet of paper here. Yeah, there's a lot down behind, and they will come out as and when. So like your submission, we'll <laughs> yeah. see it grow. I think so, yeah, and there's so, it's such a panorama, so. So it's about know. running out of space, is it? I start quite immediately, and then I don't really think about the composition until afterwards. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, so I kind of like to give myself the freedom to expand. Some people would accuse you of not having any discipline. Yeah, I think that is maybe the one thing I find, but actually sometimes it works brilliantly. Well, it becomes your signature style, yeah, exactly, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Wow, looking forward to seeing many more pages added yeah, across just... the course of the day. <laughs> Working on this one, I'm going to kind of work on that one in a minute. I work quite fast and then I need to make sure I don't lose memento. Memento? Momentum, that's the one. <laughs> Despite a love of painting from an early age, Jen Gash from Gloucestershire opted for a career in occupational therapy. She describes art as her path to fulfilment, and she's recently enrolled on an MA in fine art. For her submission, she imagined a ghostly Edwardian amusement park in Bristol. You've been busy. <laughs> 
going on? I don't know, I've lost track of time already. How many canvases have you got on the go? Well, sort of four. Sort of four. Do you have trouble making up your mind? N no, yes. <laughs> For me, it's a much more sporadic thing than a sit down, paint one canvas finish. And I know people do do that, but. Yeah. Well, they traditionally do it in a painting competition. <laughs> Our eight competitors are joined on the beach today by 50 wildcard artists. Day beside the seaside. Here to take on a different view closer to the shore on the south side of the beach. Just don't get drowned <laughs> or sure. carried away to sea. I picked up a piece of cliff chalk just here on the beach and I drew out the original drawing with it. Draws just like these do. <laughs> The artist who most impresses the judges will then compete with the wild card winners from other heats for a place in the semi-final. As the morning wears on, the once deserted beach is starting to fill up. You've just spotted this woman on the beach. Yeah. And you put, popped her in, and yeah. now she's moved on. Yeah. So it's a combination of planned and unplanned. Oh, yeah, there's got to be figures. The whole scene is full of life. How could you paint that without putting people on the beach? The movement element of the figures in the scene is challenging, very challenging, because obviously, if you were to start painting one person five minutes later, they're not there anymore. So if I do put any figures in, there'll probably be an element of movement in them, I think, if I can. No stranger to competition, Stuart Beckett gave up his ambitions as a professional martial artist to pursue a successful career as an oil painter. After competing in the heats two years ago, he's returning on the strength of a new submission, a view of different transport links across the River Hamble near his Southampton home. So, Stuart, what's happening here? I'm aiming to get the state of uh, working people against people in leisure. Ah. So we've got the little guy up there working on the scaffolding. All right, OK. And I want to try and get him in as a kind of counterpoint to the people laying around on the beach. <laughs> as you're talking me through, I'm starting to feel a bit panicky myself. There's so much. <laughs> there is a lot going on, yeah. While some artists are getting to grips with the complexity of the view in front of them, one is also interested in what's behind. I'm quite interested in the buildings. I might reconstruct the landscape and put it in a different part of the painting. Professional artist Yelon Ran Huang came to Britain from China 18 years ago. Captivated by the idiosyncrasies of British life, Yellen loves to paint busy street scenes in a traditional Chinese style. Her submission, a vertical panorama of a rainy London street, was created using Chinese ink brushed onto thin rice paper. Yelon, I've studied Chinese painting, so there's something wonderfully reminiscent for me about the way that you put the paint down. But then there's also something that you do which is very different, which is this sort of combination of a Western-style painting. Yeah. It's brilliant fusion. What about the seaside? I mean, how do you feel about the location? A little bit shocked at the beginning. Yeah. Think about how am I going to paint a sea when I can <laughs> paint so much buildings? <laughs> yeah. But there's one thing I can't see yet, which is the people. Where are the people? All my figures will be uh, black figures, reflect to the Chinese painting. So we'll just get little black marks, no bikinis. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen a bikini in a Chinese painting. Maybe. Oh, good no. idea. <laughs> <laughs> Competing for a place in the semi-final, our artists are nearly one hour into their four-hour challenge. I'm more nervous now than I was at the beginning, because obviously I'm aware of what I need to do. Optimism-wise, I'd say probably five ur urging on a six out of ten. <laughs> Hedging my bets. One thing that could go wrong at this time is I switch between the two too much and then don't get one finished enough, because I'm quite good at starting things. Might not be so good at finishing things. Here 
Here at Broadstairs in Kent, our eight artists are halfway through their four-hour challenge to paint this increasingly lively beach scene. Getting in all the detail, I think I took on a bit too much because actually looking at the view, there's so much going on. But for one artist, the devil is certainly in the detail. I would like eventually this picture to be filled with everything. So I just want to get as much in as possible. Doing a bit, nothing. Oh no, I've got to do a bit over there as well, you know. So it's like, yeah. But generally, I think I can see where I'm going. <laughs> kind of. Sixty-four-year-old Martin Taylor has forged a career as an artist by creating photorealistic observations of nature, which he refers to as tree portraits. His highly detailed submission of his favourite oak tree in his native Northamptonshire took him over a month to complete. Martin, what is it about today that's sort of uh, exciting you? About you? Well, everything. I mean, I'm, li I'm liking, like, right on the end of this, whatever you call it, the... Uh, the beach? No, the, the beach. Here? Yeah. The waves are crashing in there on the end there. People, the colour. Yeah. But also, right up here, you yeah. know, against that amazing blue, look, the birds? Yeah. Well, they're quite nice from this distance. You get up oh, close, they're quite look. menacing. Yeah, look at this one waddling towards us. Yeah, I'm watching well, you, they're mate. Quite, they're quite beautiful, of course. I keep hearing screams. I don't know whether it's seagulls oh, it's or people, it's people being murdered. It's people enjoying them. It's child, children. Yeah, it is. It's kids having fun, it's isn't kids it? having fun, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. have no time for that. All our artists have had to adapt their techniques to work in the open air and against the clock. But for one artist, this has been particularly challenging. Printmaking outside is you're facing the elements. So I think that's making the work more exciting. We'll see if anything comes out at the end. <laughs> for the past 10 years, professional artist Jane McKay has been specialising in monochrome prints by dry point etching. Her submission of narrowboats on a canal near her Midlands home was created on a metal plate and texture was added by layering bubble wrap and parcel tape in the printing press. This is not a natural choice for a beach in the sunshine. That's true. It's very much a studio <laughs> it's very, skill. Yes. So what made you choose this particular specialism? Because it's quite complicated. I liked having different layers of different information and mixing them up. I like quite fluid techniques that you can mess around with. I could do 20 versions and they'll all look completely different, but they'll all be made from the same three plates. So you'll print lots, will you? Yeah. In the course of the day? Yeah. Will you and have time? One. Yeah. <laughs> it's a tie. Is this Landscape Artist of the Year or an episode of Baywatch? Look where we are. I can't help <laughs> feeling we should be in a mankini. <laughs> The thought is I think, horrific. I think the thought is very attractive. <laughs> um, this is so England. It is England, isn't, isn't it? it? Everything about it, the signs, the very narrow, small, cute beach, the grubby little boats. And when one thinks about landscape, funny enough, thinks it's quite static usually. There's a bit of wind and the light changes, but this is, the whole thing is alive. Yeah. And that is, that's a challenge. It should be overwhelming. I find people in the landscape very difficult and I don't do them ever. My landscapes are usually uninhabited, so this would be uh, a nightmare for me. As midday approaches, beach lovers are out in force, creating compositional headaches. I might have to put a person in it. That's a bit, I don't know. <laughs> Not what I want to do. People or not people? That's the question. But despite the ever-increasing crowds, one artist only has eyes for architecture. I love buildings and the stories behind them. I like to sort of find somewhere where there's a sense of history there and to get behind that initial facade and see actually what makes a place a place. Working as a repro graphics officer, Michelle Heron divides her time between reproducing complex legal documents and painting in her studio. Her submission in acrylics reflects her nostalgia for everyday suburbia and is a tribute to the disappearing aspects of her community. 
You've turned your back to this view here and you're mm -hmm. focusing on the rock face and the little huts. Yeah, I wanted to avoid the sort of chocolate box side of it and focus on the older parts of the building, the overlooked parts of the, the scene. I like the graffiti on the wall and... You like showing a bit of love to the unloved. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. And are you used to painting outside? No, I haven't done it for quite a few years, but, yeah, I was painting London streets, so I'd probably get abused if I was painting <laughs> So I tell you what I'm going to do. So I tell you, paint all this, miss that building out, go along the sea line, and then come up, put the castle in. In the next two hours, I've got about 10 buildings to paint and um, some people. I'm just going to paint them black. Not go over there and paint them, I mean, paint them on there black. Amateur artist Peter John Robert Thompson has had a varied career working as a professional silkscreen printer and even painting colourful landscapes and logos onto the inflatable walls of bouncy castles. His submission, painted in his signature bright palette, captures the hustle and bustle of a terrace street in his home city of Leicester. So look where we are, Peter. Yes. It's not bad, is it? No. English seaside at its best. Yes. Do you come to the seaside ever? Um, no. No? <laughs> <laughs> Only now. Where do you live? Uh, Leicester. OK, that's about as far from the seaside as you can get, isn't it? Mm. She painted a fantastic picture of that street in Leicester. Oh, yeah, thank you. It looks like it took quite a long time. It did. How long so, do you think? Over 200 hours. 200 hours. Mm. And today you've got four. Four. Yeah. There's been no detail, not like on that. Yeah. But what can you do? That'd be nice. I was going to say, I hope you got some sunscreen on. I'll put some on at 3 o'clock this morning. Well, you might want to top up again. I don't want you ending up like a lobster. No. <laughs> <laughs> at the other end of the beach, our 50 wildcard artists are well underway with their paintings. There's so many views here, and they're all finding elements that are interesting mm. to them. There are people painting other artists, yeah. there are people painting this cliff and the whale up there. Some are doing that out there. There's even a guy painting the lift here. I was told you're Biro Man. I'm, an, I'm a Biro Man. The Biro gives it a very dark, almost brooding sense. I am subconsciously a dark, brooding type. OK. Well, you are lurking under a I'm, sort I'm of lurking, pillar. I'm lurking in the shadows. If you were looking for a troll, this is where you'd come <laughs> looking for him, wouldn't you? <laughs> I've decided to go for this view because I love the expanse of water and the expanse of sky. And then this other artist just strode out in front of me and I just thought it was the perfect opportunity to try and capture her in the painting as well. Our eight artists are now reaching the halfway point of the challenge with two hours left to complete their landscapes. I've just decided to redo the, the bottom because I've not left enough room and it's just looking a bit too squashed. I'm trying to be calm, because if I'm not, then I'm just going to panic. I think the wind is affecting the paper and tear part of it already. I think I took on a bit too much because actually looking at the view, there's so much going on. People keep coming, things keep changing. I thought it would be easier. We're on the Kent coast, where our eight artists are halfway through their four-hour challenge to paint the view of Broadstairs Beach. Ah! No, it's all going to fly away! <laughs> Can I just... <laughs> Thank you. The sun is still shining, but a sea breeze has picked up and is causing problems for our artists. Yeah, still windy. Oh, no, no. Well, halfway, and how the scene has changed itself. Mm -hmm. We've never had a location no. like this. It's so, so full of energy, the wind coming in off the water. Tide going out. Yeah. Yes. There's no sort of half-hearted approach to Broadstairs. Now, Yellen, to what extent do you think this hybrid of the Chinese in the European tradition is working? Is I, it working? I think, funny enough, we've given the artists this chaotic scene. And what Yellen has done is she's painted everything. 
She started with the building, she painted the bay, she's picked out different architectural features, and I think it's working rather well. It's an interesting way to traverse the landscape. Her submission, remember, was more than one piece of paper joined to another, so it's not unusual for her to work in that method. But I think the wind's picked up now, and I can see her with swathes of the paper wrapped around her legs trying to hold it in position. Um, now, Michelle, she knows what she's doing, which is this rather 1930s staircase. Yeah. At the moment, it's not got the same sort of magic that we had in the submission. She's working quite slowly, and she knows that's a problem. But she's got the red brick building on the right. Suddenly, that flavour of her painting is coming to fruition. Lorna paints as much as she wants and keeps on adding. How's she doing, do you think? Lorna's been really slow to add. I was quite surprised that she's paid so much attention to this one sheet of paper. But I think what she's really good at is editing down to the essence. Mm. And it immediately conveys that language of the whole scene without sort of giving you every single detail. Now, Jen, it's quite hard to see what she's doing because she's leaning over her canvas. I couldn't really get a good look at it. What do you make of it? Well, I think Jen's been quite clever, actually, because I think she's moved away from all the people and all the life. And she's found a sort of a melancholy, really, in the old lift and funicular to the right-hand side. And it's got that fantastic ghostliness and cloudiness to it that we had in her submission as well. I think I just don't feel the sharpness of today's light in it. Stuart's gone full steam ahead, hasn't he? Yeah, it's a real seaside impression. And actually, he's managed to not make it too pretty, not too light. It just makes it look so easy. His whole thing was the narrative of the man on the scaffolding and the, and the people having their leisure time at the bottom, and that juxtaposition. There's still a lot to do to get that narrative across, but what he's got already is, yeah, it's just fantastic. We are terrible, though. We've got given there's all these people, and then we're saying we don't want too many people because it looks a bit oh, sort of tree. Heaven you know? forbid they get the <laughs> exact number of people incorrect. <laughs> I never do people, so I decided early on I'm not going to attempt them. I've got enough to work on with the buildings. I think I quite like the mystery of not having people in the scene. It sort of adds to the atmosphere. Now, there's one thing conspicuous about this painting on this beach. <laughs> yeah. There are no people, and yeah. there are hundreds of people. I don't like people. <laughs> you That's not true. No, I love people. Um, as soon as you put a person in a place, it changes it so much. It would transform it. The painting exudes that sense of meditativeness. That's a, it's, That's a word. It, it is a word, but it's a very difficult word, isn't it? It's not very really useful. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the artists might not be inspired by beach life, but 167 years ago, another artist visited neighbouring beach Ramsgate Sands and he was captivated by the life he found there. In 1851, a young William Powell Frith followed the new trend of the age and took a steam train to visit the seaside. William Powell Frith really launched himself on the world with these fantastic landscapes that incorporated all of humanity, really. And his greatest was Ramsgate Sands. He was one of the first artists to really capture these large group scenes, way before even the Impressionists like Manet did, um, uh, as he was at least 10 or 15 years earlier. A friend of Charles Dickens, Frith shared the writer's talent for conjuring an assortment of intriguing characters. You're slowly taken into the different stories that are told across the canvas. You have the rather grand family sitting there on their chairs with their parasols and their crinolines. You've even got a young man who seems to have caught the eye of a young woman. And if you look very carefully at the slightly older woman sitting next to her, she's looking rather disapprovingly. It feels as much like a book as it does like a painting. When he first presented it, people were quite critical about it. They thought it was rather vulgar. But then he managed to get it into the Royal Academy Summer Exhibition. It became the greatest triumph. It was chosen as picture of the year. And in the end, they had to put a guardrail in front of it to sort of keep people back, because it took such a long time to read. The painting brought Frith fame and fortune and was sold to none other than Queen Victoria herself. For an artist who started as a son of a Harrogate innkeeper, to have the approval of uh, the royal family would have meant the world. Today, all our artists are hoping to capture the spirit of the seaside in their work. And after almost four hours painting, the wildcards are coming to the end of their day at the beach. 
tell you what, there are worse places to be, aren't there, in an afternoon? <laughs> yeah. What would you be doing normally if you weren't here? Um, I work in IT. So does that, that mean you're in front of a computer all day? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm customer-facing. Oh, you're customer-facing. Well, not today, though. You're whale-facing. <laughs> yeah, whale-facing. Placed here to raise environmental awareness, Plasticus the Whale is a 10-metre sculpture made from a quarter of a tonne of waste plastic, the same amount that passes into the ocean every second. The whale caught my eye because it's so shiny in the sun and it's like sort of diamonds. And to hear that it's actually to raise more awareness, that, that's, just, that's just brilliant, really. Quite amazing when you see it in real life how much plastic there is. We actually decided to come down there and pick up some plastic bottles and some waste plastic, and we filled up two dustbin bagfuls. All marine life is suffering. What are we doing to this planet, for goodness sake? Plasticus the whale might have caught the attention of both the public and our artists today, but which one of the wildcard paintings has caught the attention of the judges? Same with the guy in the hat here, who started with that very translucent drawing. It was just so beautiful. Yeah, the woman who was working in pastel, for example, using those really highly coloured pinks more, I thought she made a great start. There's one that I really love. I loved it this morning. I think it continues to be strong. Yes. Definitely. OK, shall I go tell her? Yes. Hi! Hello. You're our wild card winner. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. congratulations. <laughs> the way that you painted your fellow painter was fantastic. That was the last thing I expected was also to, to win the World Card, so I'm really chuffed. Rebecca Meltzer from Surrey will now join a pool of wild cards from across the heats, and the judges will choose just one to go through to the semi-final. I saw you went wandering off. Yeah. Why were you doing that? I've collected some seaweed. Oh, I was hoping you'd do and that. And I've pressed it. Yeah. And I will put it into the print. So this will give us a real context of today. Yeah. The sand I can put in the plate, that will be another layer of texture. So almost a sandblasted print with seaweed yeah. overtones yes. today. Yes. Yeah, Roughly. that sounds great, doesn't it? It sounds amazing. <laughs> While one artist is still experimenting, another is reaching a critical stage. I mix some flour with water. That's a quite a traditional way of uh, backing the paper. <gasps> oh no. Don't look so worried, Yolan. I make you a terrible said... job. Are so... you trying to fix it from the back now? Yes. And then will you paint over it when yes. it's done? Yes. Okay. Stand that piece of uh, painting up for me, please. Will you mind? Stand it up? Yes, stand it up. Either way, it doesn't matter. Oh, God, OK. OK, now I'm scared. What, 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 hang on, hang on, what are you doing? I'm going to... Put it in between, it. like yes. a sandwich? Otherwise, there will be damage even worse because the wind too, uh, too okay, strong. OK, 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 OK. If I hold this... Uh, yes, please. Okay, I've got it, I've got it. Gently, got it. hold it yeah, up. Yeah, I'm holding it gently. Mm. And tell me when to move. Um, up, up, up. That's great. I can't even see the holes. Oh, yeah, yeah you can. Yeah, but only a little bit. So is this stuck on the board now? It's it, oh, not obviously not. <laughs> but the backing is on, so that's fine. Yeah, the backing is on. Our eight artists are entering the final stages of the challenge. There's a danger that I overcook it, so anything I do will have to be quite simple, but also I need something to retain the freshness in it. I've only done two prints, so I'm a bit <laughs> A little bit anxious, because I still feel like I've got quite a bit of work to do, so I really need to, like, knuckle down and focus. <laughs> Here at Broadstairs on the Kent coast, our eight artists are nearing the end of their challenge. Oh, I'm like rushing now. <laughs> but yeah, I could do with another four weeks. <laughs> it's quite lively and I don't want to lose that, so I'm at risk of overworking it if I keep playing with it. 
There's so much more still to go. It would be exciting, I suppose, to make radical changes, but I'm not going to be doing that. It's frankly a mess in here. <laughs> yeah. What the heck is going on? Is everything under control? No. Artist, you have five minutes left. Five minutes left. No! <laughs> well, I just have to sort of stop tinkering. That's what I'm feeling. And now I'm going to go and tinker, all right? I think I've got it under control. It's just getting what I want in the time. Lots of damage under the painting. Your paint is your paper ripping. So it's very delicate, very, very delicate. Artists, your time is up. Please put down your tools and stand away from your work. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, well done. Our eight artists have given it their all. Now it's time to hear what the judges think. So I think Peter caught the spirit of the day. Brilliant mm -hmm. summer day, lots of people. It's a lovely cartoon version yeah. of the day at the seaside. I just think, yeah, he, he hasn't given himself enough time to play around with the narrative that we love so much in his submission. I think what Jen does is she plays to her own strengths. She doesn't want to just paint a pretty picture of the day. Mm. The whole thing has got this fantastic play of light, so she makes me feel like I'm at Broadstairs 50 years ago, 60 years ago. It's a really, really compelling bit of narrative. Michelle has given us a clue of what the painting was going to be. She is starting to get that nostalgic feeling that she found in her submission. But I think it's really convincing. You absolutely know that this is today. And so, despite the fact she's run out of time, I can clearly see where this painting is headed. I really salute Yelon for this quite fantastical, imaginative, and actually complex composition. I mean, it's a sort of tour de force in Yelon saying, OK, I've got classical Chinese ink training and I'm now approaching this with a sort of Western painting sensibility. I mean, I think I really commend her for that. Stuart's given us two paintings here. I mean, yeah. Yeah. we were blown away by this this yeah. morning. And then I think this was just too much. It's such a pity because this is just brilliant. Somehow it fights against the fluidity of his mm. style, I think. Yeah. With Martin, I feel a bit like I've gone back to the 1920s or the 1930s, when there were far fewer visitors than we actually mm -hmm. had today, I think. Yeah. I think some of the aspects are problematic because they're sort of too sweet in their rendering. The birds in the sky, the little whiff of that white cloud. I think let the painting down. With Lorna, you have an artist who actually knows what to do with all of these people and all of these characters. She understands that you have to distill it to an essence in order to give it that sense of character. Mm. Somehow it seems very light, and actually there was a solidity to yeah. the blue sky today. I'm genuinely really refreshed by the way that Jane uses her medium. She's using all of these different things to do weird and wonderful things where she's not quite sure what the result will be. Is this uh, the bit of seaweed? I think it might be, and I think if I've got any concerns, it's whether the three things need to sit side by side. The judges can only put one artist through to the semi-final, and to narrow it down, they'll first select a short list of three. I know that this artist has got promise, and there are moments which maybe give me enough confidence yeah. to put them that, into the And actually, I think these three. two look great from a distance. So those three... Those three. ..would make a nice final three. OK. Artists, thank you so much for letting us watch and enjoy your creativity in this glorious English scene. It's been fascinating to watch you all. However, only three of you can go forward to the shortlist. And the first artist the judges have selected is Jen Gash. <laughs> the second artist is Michelle Heron. And the third artist to make the shortlist is Lorna Wheel.
Commiserations to the artists who didn't make the shortlist, but we've loved watching you work. Thank you all very much. Yes, thank, thank you very you. much. You did good stuff. A little bit disappointed, but also very really happy that I have the chance to try. Taking into account both the submission and today's paintings, the judges must now decide who will go through to the semi-final. It's been a beautiful day. The sand, the sea, the seagulls, and a beach thronged with people enjoying yeah. themselves. Do those three shortlisted pictures capture the spirit of the day? I think if you take all three, you combine them, yeah, it really tells the story of today. So what we feel we have now are three artists who absolutely stuck to who they are and yeah. did something which was distinctly broadsters, but in their own way. Michelle, clearly interested in her submission in a world that's disappearing. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Despite the place being yes. full of people, she's seeing an empty view of yeah. this place. But I think if you look at Michelle's, it's very vivid blue sky. It looks like this morning before everyone arrived. It feels absolutely sort of pregnant with possibilities and a nice day at the seaside. But there is something melancholic about English seaside towns. And I think she looked around and thought, how do I get that across? Yes, it isn't complete, but she's resorted back to her own language of pain. I had a conversation with Jeff which dwelt on the melancholy. I do think there is a melancholic air to her work, and that's partly to do with the romanticism of the colour palette. I don't think it's melancholic. I think it's toned down, certainly. The play of light on that staircase is just absolutely sensational. She uses muted uh, palettes to get that sort of sense of decay. Now if, I, if I look around, there is decay. I think that Lorna does, you know, play with narrative in a brilliant way. You can really have fun letting your eye wander over it, picking out different characters. And I like the way she responds almost instinctively. She just mm. starts, mm. almost like writing a, a story, you know, you get started and then you sort of see what might emerge from it. Young illustrator that's just started, it's very impressive. Michelle, Jen, Lorna, well done for making it through to the shortlist, but sadly, only one of you can make it through to the semi-final, and the judges have made their decision. And the artist that the judges have selected is Jen Gash. Congratulations! Congratulations! I came here with no expectation at all, just have a nice day out. I can't believe that they just said I won the heat. I'm, I'm speechless. I can't wait to tell my, my husband <laughs> and my mum. We chose Jen because she found a narrative which isn't apparent, and she made a very convincing sort of atmospheric painting about it, which is really exciting. I like the way she gets so close to being abstract, and her scene is brimming with life. It feels like the stuff underneath my feet. It feels like sand. That's where her life came in. <laughs>